Hello everybody, today I'll explain what is windowing. So windowing is the process of taking a small subset of a larger data set for processing and analysis. Windowing is accomplished using a window function or a tapering function. So why do we need windowing? Let's understand how to perform and process a time signal. So when you capture a sound signal or a sound wave, you're capturing it for a finite amount of time in the time domain. And in order to understand what that signal is made up of, you need to convert or view that signal in the frequency domain. And this is possible by performing a fast Fourier transform analysis on the time signal so as to view it on the frequency domain. Now, one of the prerequisites of this Fourier transform algorithm is that the signal must be infinitely long in the time domain. We know that it is not possible. We can only capture a signal that is finite in the time domain. So in order to satisfy that Fourier transform algorithm, a part of the signal is repeated in time or it is appended one after the other in time so as to appear infinitely long in the time domain and hence we can perform the Fourier transform analysis. Now here's where the problem starts. If you append the signal one after the other, there is no guarantee that the final infinitely long signal is continuous in the time domain. And if it's not continuous, it re leads to discontinuities, which is where we need windowing. Anyway, we will discuss in greater detail in this video. So let's start about the different types of measurement. So there is periodic measurement and non-periodic measurement. So when a signal is measured periodically, it means that the captured signal is symmetric and can be appended to create a continuous infinite waveform. So you can you know, append the signal one after the other and you will get the same infinitely long signal, infinitely long and continuous signal. And if you take the FFT of, of that signal, you would get the actual spectrum. There is no need for windowing in this case. But here's the thing, it is very rare that real life measurements are periodic. So let's say this is a signal and we capture the signal. Now, if you look closely, we have captured the signal. We start our measurement exactly when this wave starts from zero and stop exactly when it's stopping at zero. Now, as you can see, this is pretty ideal. Like we, we just cannot do something like this, like start exactly at zero and stop exactly at zero. But just to understand, let's consider that we have done this. So this is this periodically captured signal. And if we try to you know, append this signal one after the other, something like this, we're gonna get this continuous waveform which is infinitely long. Now, it is not possible to distinguish between this and the infinitely long waveform because they both are similar. There is no discontinuity. And if you perform the FFT of this uh, time signal, you should get something like this in the frequency domain. Now, this is a simple sinusoidal oscillation you can consider it as one kilohertz and you get this spectra as one kilohertz. So this is a, you know, a periodic measurement, pretty rare, but you don't need to apply any windowing because the signal is continuous in the time domain and you get uh, the frequency spectra. Now let's talk about non-periodic measurement. When a signal measurement is non-periodic, it means that the captured signal is not symmetric. So this is a real life condition. All real life measurements are non-periodic. When you try to append the signals one after the other, you will not get this infinitely long continuous waveform. Well, the waveform will be infinitely long, but it will not be continuous. And let's say if you take the FFT of, of a non-periodic measurement, it will give you misleading spectrum information. So let's say, again, this is our signal and this is our measured time. So as you can see here, we're just capturing it randomly. We're not uh, being, we're not focusing on exactly when the signal starts and ends, but we're just capturing a chunk of the signal. Now this is a real life measurement. Every real life measurement is like this. And this is a non-periodically captured signal because if we take this chunk of signal and try to append it one after the other, we do get this infinite waveform, but it's not continuous because you can see the regions of discontinuity. So those are the regions where, you know, the signal as if theoretically jumps from a high value to a low value. And, uh, you know, if you take the FFT of this whole block of signal, you will get the information of, you know, the spectrum of this signal. But in addition, you also get something else. So the FFT algorithm thinks that there is an impulsive event there, which is like very short in the time domain, and it results in a broader frequency spectrum. So let's say if you take the FFT of this signal without applying any windowing, you should get something like this. You do get this one kilohertz peak, but in addition, you get some broad frequency spectra. And that technically is called 
leakage or spectral leakage. So let's talk about spectral leakage. So spectral leakage occurs when you, you know, try to append a non-periodically measured signal. It occurs mainly because it produces discontinuities, and these discontinuities, which are short in the time domain, result in a broad frequency spectrum. And this widespread frequency spectrum is the spectral leakage. So it is a consequence of this non-periodic measurement. And this is where uh, we can solve this problem by using the windowing or windowing theory. So you see a signal like this, you have discontinuities, so we need to remove those discontinuities, and that is accomplished by windowing. So window function is a mathematical function that is zero valued outside of some chosen interval, symmetric around the middle interval, having maximum value in the middle and tapers away from the middle. Now, the main purpose of the window is to reduce those sharp discontinuities that arise by appending the signal one after the other. So the purpose of windowing is that when you apply windowing to a signal, you can almost get rid of those discontinuities. There are different types of windows scattered to different specific signal processing requirements. So we'll not talk about the different types of windows in this video. We'll talk it in another video, but I'll explain you what is this windowing process all about. So how does this windowing process start? So first the signal is acquired non-periodically, and then the block of signal is multiplied by a chosen window. So after this process, is everything is same, you just append the signals one after the other, you get this continuous waveform, which is infinitely long, and there are no discontinuities present in the signal, the reason being windowing. Now let's say this is the schematic, so we have this non-periodic signal as in every real life signal, then we multiply the signal by the window, this is just a normal window, and then you multiply it and you see that yeah, the the ends or the start and the beginning and the end are like faded out sort of so that is a windowed signal then we take this windowed signal and simply append one after the other or something like this and you can see that we get a waveform that is infinitely long and most important continuous so those regions of discontinuity have disappeared it looks like it's a continuous waveform so which means if we take the Fourier uh, fast Fourier transform of this signal you should get something like this. You get this one kilohertz peak and you have this, you know, reduced spectral leakage. Now keep in mind that you cannot get a single straight line because the windowing function is not perfect. It does, it did alter it to some extent, but at least the good thing is that there is no discontinuity and you don't get a broad frequency spectrum. So this spectral leakage has reduced considerably. So this is how it look like. So if you have a signal like this in the time domain, you window it, you just remove the, you know, just fade in and fade out the, the beginning and the end. Now, windowing is not a perfect operation. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages of windowing, as always, as with anything. And the advantages are that windowing helps to reduce the discontinuity at the beginning and end of the signal so that you can append it one after the other and get back the original infinitely long continuous waveform. The most important thing is that it's continuous, there are no discontinuities, which further results in the FFT spectrum being uh, as close to the accurate spectrum as possible with minimal leakage. So these are the advantages, but the disadvantage is that the final signal that is infinitely long and continuous doesn't resemble the actual signal. It's not an exact carbon copy of that actual waveform because there is a compromise on both amplitude and energy of the signal. However, there are some window corrections available which does take this into account and which will, you know, increase or decrease the amplitude and energy based on the calculations. But both cannot be applied at the same time. So there is a compromise, there is like a trade-off, but, you know, it has more advantages because you get rid of those discontinuities and you get the signal with minimal leakage. Now, what will happen if you try to apply a windowing to a periodically captured signal? Now, it is just out of curiosity. Anyway, it's pretty rare to get a periodically captured signal, but let's say if you do have it, and if you apply windowing, well, then you are artificially introducing discontinuity in the signal. So you'd be better off not applying windowing to a periodically captured signal because the FFT would be just fine. But if you do windowing to a periodically captured signal, you would, you, know, you would get those spectral leakages in the frequency domain. So if you have a periodically captured signal, don't apply windowing. So to conclude, windowing is accomplished using a window function or a tapering function. 
Real life signals are acquired non periodically, and windowing helps to create this continuous, infinitely long waveform in the time domain and also you know, reduces this spectral leakage. All right, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.